Welcome to a double upload, my lovely darlings. Well, since I write these myself, I haven't really planned on having double uploads anytime soon. But uh, today we got a little treat. Tenna Berchan surprised me today with her own self-written Bakugo X reader story. It's called Camping. Um... I hope you enjoy it. I really do. Because I don't have much nice things to say about it. Um, but before we dive right into it, please remember to check my merch store and my Patreon. Both links are down in the description. It would be nice if you could check them out. And uh, if you cannot support me financially, you can do it more indirectly by making Susan do her fucking job. Uh, simply like or dislike the video, doesn't really matter which one of the two you do, as long as you do them. And comment something nice below. And watch the video until the end, and share it around, plaster it all over your social media, and show it to your friends. At least the ones that won't hate you for sharing fanfiction around. Uh... Also, it would be nice if you could subscribe and enjoy my... Beautiful, darling, doll army. Oh yeah, and remember to hit the bell icon. <laughs> Let's get right into the story. You pack yours and Bakugo's things into the backseat of his truck. While your grumpy boyfriend sits in the driver's seat, you read over your list. You made sure that you brought everything for the trip. Bug spray, sleeping bags, tarp, food, and one amazingly handsome boyfriend. All check. Bakugo rolls his eyes and breathes out a big sigh. Yeah, yeah, shut up, get your ass in the car, so you can get the shit over with. You give him a smug look as you get into the truck. He says the car... And you're off. I can't believe we're actually going camping. You bounce up and down in your seat out of the pure excitement. You honestly feel like a kid again. You look at Bakugo, resting his arm on the window, one hand on the wheel. He starts to speak. So I can't believe that you've never gone camping. He chuckles. Like, I thought everyone at least once has gone camping. You still remember his face when you told him that you actually never went camping. It's the reason why you and him are going camping now. It all started two days ago. You went to get the mail. You skimmed through the letters and came across a brochure about a new camping place that opened up. He had run up the stairs and burst the door open and said, Camping! Bakuka jumped and screamed, What? We need to go. There's a new site. Bakugo finally calms down when he figures out that you're not in any type of danger. He huffs. Why would we go camping if we have a perfectly fine home? What would we go into the woods where there's no running AC? Uh, there's a bunch of bugs that we would have to deal with. You poke your fingers together. Well, I've never actually gone camping. His mouth drops and he starts to sputter. <laughs> How? How have you never... Gone! You start to explain. Well, living so far into the city and having both parents working office jobs, I guess they never gave it a thought. He looked a little disappointed. But instead of camping, I made a little tent out of blankets and used a flashlight as the fire. That... that counts, right? That made him look even more sad. But just as soon as that face came, it went away. 
Well, why that is sad, I'm still not going. He crossed his arms, and you gave him those big puppy dog eyes that you knew he can't resist. He looked at you. No. You widen your eyes, and you say in your sweetest voice, Please. He says no again, and you turned around and started walking away. Okay, I guess I have to find someone else to go with me on my first ever camping trip. Hmm, I wonder who. Oh, I know, Deku. Before you could say anything else, you hear him yell. Like hell, Deku is going camping with you. You smile and turn around. So, we're going then? In a big huff, he says, Yes. And before you know it, you're in a truck and on your way on your very, very first camping trip. You close your eyes and fall back into your seat while listening to the car's noises. The wind hitting against the car. Other cars passing yours. A few pebbles here and there. It was the perfect white noise for a little a cat nap. But before you could fall asleep, you hear Hey dumbass, we're almost there. Want to see what activities we can do over there? You grumbled, pulling out the brochure to see what else you two can do. Uh fishing? No, boring. Can't sit still for long, let alone the boat. Uh, okay. You skip all the sporty stuff, cause, you know, you would get your ass handed to you. That didn't leave you with a lot of activities to do. Well, fun ones anyway. All there was left was boring old lady stuff, and then you see it. Um, there's a hiking trail. Wanna go hiking? Uh, fine, I guess. A few minutes later, both of you arrive at the camping site. You see a sign that says, Welcome to the Pink Forest. Enjoy your stay. As you drive down the dirt road, you find a really nice spot. He parks the truck between two trees as you start to grab the stuff. You tell Bakugo to find rocks and wood to set up the campfire. You drop all the stuff in the truck of the car and pop open the trunk. I made a bed out of the blankets and propped up the turp so you both won't wake up covered in leaves and sticks. Okay, everything is set up. Wanna start heading over to the hiking trail? Yeah, whatever, let's just go. You followed the signs that led you to the trail and you were presented with a beautiful long wooden bridge with cherry trees as far as the eyes could see. As you both started to walk down the trail, you saw a sign and you read it out loud. Welcome to the Butterfly Trail. Can you uncover all the true love stories about our beautiful little insect friends? <laughs> stories of butterflies and love. Now if that isn't the stupidest shit I've ever heard, how can you jot something that you have never read before? You don't even know if the stories are good or not. I uh, yeah, wanna bet. Yes. Okay, fine. If the story is good, I have to buy you whatever the fuck you want. But if the story is ass, you can ask me to take you anywhere for an entire month. Deal. You sigh as usual. He makes everything into a competition. You both continue down the trail, and you passed many signs, and read them all. The story begins with a wealthy old man named Hikaru, who lives in a village in the pan. Hikaru's house stood just beyond a cemetery. He lived surrounded by a beautiful garden. Hikaru was polite, elegant, never unkind, but he never married. He lived alone. 
He seldom ventured out into the village, and his neighbors gossiped about him. Hikaru was far from mad. He was simply sad. Many years before, he had loved a girl named Akiko. She was beautiful and kind, as lovely as the summer wind, as sweet as springtime pears. He dreamed of the life they would live together. But one day Akiko became sick, and sadly she died. Hikaru moved into the house behind the cemetery where she was buried. Wherever after, he thought only of her. Every day he walked to her grave. Every day he prayed. He took flowers to the grave. He lived in his memories of the days when he had been happy. You looked at each other, but didn't say anything. But gave each other a hug and a kiss. While you were walking back to the camp, you said you were hungry. Bakugo nods and says, Good thing you prepared the food. Later you both ate marshmallows and hot dogs. Once you both were full of mellows and cat dogs, you told him you're getting sleepy. And Bakugo nodded. He sighs. Uh, we should probably rest, but... But before you could get up, he holds your hand and rubs your thigh. You know, I'm actually happy we went camping. Didn't think it would be fun, to be honest. He gets closer to you. His hand rides up your leg. You look into his eyes. His fiery, crimson eyes. I'm happy too. <laughs> Sorry that I had to trick you into coming with me. You both laugh. He holds your face and pulls you in for a kiss. You blush. You begin to mumble something under your breath. <laughs>